here. Sunday night edition. What the fuck is happening, Lisa, yet? Oh, I don't know. I no. have no idea what's about to Nothing's happen. Nothing's going to happen. You're just going to sit there like a fucking Momo. It's great to be back. I'm sorry about missing last Wednesday. I was on my way to New York City, so we just uh, ran out of time. So we figured we'd catch up with you, wake up to some fucking great podcasting on a Monday morning, start your day off on the right fucking foot. Old school, you know what I'm saying? Just me and the flying Jew. New York <laughs> City was fucking great. I mean, uh, the last 10 days have been hard. For people were asking, we shot a special in Vegas last week. I basically came home, uh, did a few workouts, packed. had some auditions, packed, and went right back to New York. <laughs> Uh, the special, it, you know, Lee's putting it together now. We got to still shoot a wraparound, so it's going to be a while. So uh, I know that you guys, I, I'm uh, very proud of the thoughts and the support and the questions, but special won't be around till maybe December, maybe end of November, but we'll keep you posted here. But New York City was just fucking sensational. You see, you texted me. That's why I know it's good is when you text me, you text me pictures of all the chans dragging in. Oh, right from uh, the fucking Oh, so jealous. Show. Is that where you started? Started, uh, they picked me up at Kennedy, went to the hotel, checked in, which is the first time I stayed at this Homewood Suites. And it was just phenomenal. Fucking, I'm close to Rudy's, I'm close to the Cuban joint, which delivered to my hotel room. So here's the, here's the question I had. If, I, if you went to 100 places, 99 of them, you would stay next door to the club. This yes. is the only place that you go that you take a trip to go. Well, the problem is that if I stay in New York City, I won't come over to see my family. Uh, I'm that lazy. I'm that fucking lazy. So what I do is I compromise. I go back on Wednesday, and Thursday's my New York day. I go to Opie and Anthony. After an Opie and Anthony, I run some errands. What I did instead of Opie and Anthony was this week I was going to go to jujitsu, but instead I took the A train uptown. I walked around 148th Street. I didn't go. I was going to go to 86th Street and go see my uh, grammar school and stuff. Yeah. But I really wanted to walk around 148th Street. I walked down the hill, I looked at Riverside Drive, I walked up the hill, and then I took a cab up to fucking George Washington Bridge, and I took the bus over, and then my buddy picked me up and went to eat Cuban food. I took a couple ferries. Yeah, I saw that. Which was fucking dynamite, you know, right from Edgewater or Weehawken. I took the ones from Edgewater right in, took them right back. They're nice. I took that before. I, I think I went to go visit NYU or something. We stayed in uh, right across, like, wherever that ferry drops you off. Like, there's a hotel, like, right there. Right there. And that, it's uh, that's one thing I definitely miss about the East Coast. Is I mean, it wasn't hard for you to get back into New York. I can't imagine. Listen, you could get back from New York every fifteen fucking minutes. Oh, could you take that ferry back at like three in no, the morning? No, 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 no. I think during the week it's one. On the weekend it's one, and during the week the last one is twelve ten back. Still, but it was dynamite. Just getting on there at night. Listen, anybody who knows New York City or Boston or that part of the country, September, May, and April are just beautiful times of the year to be on the East Coast. For me, this was, every time I go home, I've always told people that if you're having a problem in your life, you're having doubts, you're having insecurities, maybe you're having marital problems, do yourself a favor. Some people, instead of hanging out, put some dough together and go back to where you're from. I don't care if it's Toledo, Ohio. I don't care if it's... Quincy, Mass. I don't care if it's fucking somewhere in Iowa or Mankato, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm sorry, or Boise, Idaho. When you go home <clears throat> after being gone, after being an adult, it really does something to you, especially if you tap into that energy. There's an energy you tap into when you go back that you go, oh, I used to go to that store. Yeah. Wow, that's not a shoe store no more. And if you get out of your car and park and just walk up and down, it gives you this empowerment. Like, you get that this empowerment that, you know what, I'm still walking these steps. Like, I walked the steps I went to grammar school. Like, I went to the cemetery, and I put some flowers. And even being there and turning around and looking around, I just looked at the playground and turned around, and it, I couldn't hear it in my hearing. I don't know if I, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. <laughs> but in my head, I could hear kids in the playground, like when I used to play in that playground and stuff like that. So... You realize how fucking lucky you are, whether you're sick, there's something wrong with you, you're, you're jobless, that you're still walking these streets. Like, it was just so surreal for me. It always is. Did it upset you that there were changes? Because uh, I went back to my hometown for, like, the real first time, God, in probably six or seven years, if, if not more. And it was weird for me. Like, they had changed so much of it, I barely recognized it. And I had that feeling, like, yeah, it was cool 
to see it, but then part of it was like, oh, they changed everything. Like, they painted the house I grew up in a different color, and it was just, it was weird. Listen, with me, change is evolution. You, you're going to go back, and things are going to change. People are going to get old. People are going to die. The yeah. sun's going to take over the pizza place. It's not as good as it was. Whatever the fuck it is, but there's always those things. There's always those constants. For us, in North Bergen, we lost Hashway's Deli, which was my constants. <clears throat> That's the second thing I did, was go to Hashways and get the news on the town and the gossip, and you bump into cops and stupidity, but it was home. It was really home, and my friend Billy Horenda, who does like sports up in Sacramento, <clears throat> I was speaking to him, excuse me, and he was telling me how he was lost when he went back without Hashways being there, because that was his staple. You know, Nick died, the pizza place, that's it. But then again, I'm 50, we're older, and this is ex expected, you know? I made the best of it. For me, when I go home, I gotta tell you, it's seeing a certain handful of friends. Right. And this time I fucked up, I didn't see Carmine, I didn't see Mr. Barone, I just- Oh no. Yeah, I didn't have a car to go down by Carmine, so tomorrow I'm gonna get an earlobe. <laughs> He's he's you to me. Oh, That's he so fucking funny. torments me with this shit. So it's like, uh, <laughs> but I seen Lubes. I seen Timmy Holloway, who gave me statues of Jimmy Hen uh, Jimmy Page, and J you know Timmy had some problems, and he cleaned up, and he looks fucking like a like a like a model. We giggled oh, great. our asses off last night. He drove me in and out of the city. I saw the freehold of Venere. We went out to dinner at Rudy's. I saw James. I saw my girl Lisa Messina. I saw James's daughter. I saw the hand group of people. I saw Grandma. Oh, she's still she's, she's still, still alive. hanging around. Just... Ninety seven, oh. but she thinks he's one hundred and three. I saw his daughter. She you thinks see... she's one hundred and three. Yes, he goes, "I'm one hundred and three, and George is arguing with her. Grandma, you can't be one hundred and three. You were born in whatever." But just seeing all that, that even Grandma, when Grandma was sixty, I was there when she was sixty. And now she's fucking 90 and she's still tormenting me. You guys, you smell like eek, eek. <laughs> she used to call eek, eek, reefer. You know? That's so, so was, funny. Opie and Anthony was great. You know, just seeing Jim and uh, Pete fucking is crazy. David's in the air. Oh, he's fucking nuts. I love him. He's fucking nuts. Uh, well, did uh, Veneri ask you to be his driver? No, I asked him. I said, what do I fill on application? <laughs> and he just started laughing. You know, they, they talk about that political town, how political it is, and they're robbing. But you know what? The town is clean. They got anti-fucking... Uh, I went on Friday night to the park and I saw these different type of cops. And my friend has, has explained to me that their task force on Fridays and Saturdays to, you know, get the uh, curfews and stuff like that. You know, 11 o'clock. I mean, do I believe in a curfew for kids? If I had a curfew, maybe I would have grown up to be a different person. So, <laughs> who the fuck knows? But it was just great to go home. The shows were great. I went to the stand. The first show I did well. The second show I ate dick. How was the food? I heard the food's great. I didn't there. eat. I oh, didn't really? eat. No, I didn't eat. I had this drunk guy give me a fucking ear beating <laughs> the whole night. I couldn't eat because if I got food and he sat there and gave me an ear beating, I just hit myself in the head with the fucking arugula sandwich, whatever the fuck I was going to eat. The stand was great. Gotham was sensational. I got to tell you, that's a great comedy club. The people, the organization, the staff there is sensational. Yeah. Sensation. What makes a good staff at a comic club? Like what as a comic, what do you look for? They're efficient. They're quiet. I didn't even know they were there. Everybody asks you if you want something, can I help you? Is this something I could get you? That always blows my mind at comedy clubs when you can hear like the wait staff aren't quiet. And try, I was a waiter. It's a hard job and you're gonna make some noise. But like some waiters just like full com full like no conversation level start asking people what they want during a set and I'm like it's just you do realize this is a comedy club right it's like it's not TGA Fridays where you last worked it's nah there's people hey listen I did the 11.45 show yeah so they must have been tired so but... it's gonna be a fucking late show it's, yeah. but you know what it went smooth my set the first night was a little choppy but second night I really had it down and that's all that mattered to me I always want to perform strong in New York you know is it cause you, you ha you're having you're like selling pretty well around the country but like for the past few times you've gone to Gotham, we've sold out pretty, is it, is it, cool? is it still cool to you? Because you, yeah, like, I, that was like a week listen, early. Listen, man, listen, this shit's not supposed to be happening. <laughs> and it's happening. And uh, for a guy like me, I'm like a kid in a candy store. 
it's pressure, but at the same time, I fucking love it. I love living in like this, and I love the people who come out and the people I talk to. I met so many cool people. The black guy who called you and threatened you. Oh, my you. God. If you didn't come back to New York with me the next time, he's going to shoot you. Uh, he's going to come. What did he say to me? He's going to come down and roll up on he's your like, He's like some real talk, man. Yeah, it's been yeah. three years. Where the fuck are you? And I was just sitting at home, and I didn't have, ten, I didn't have a chance to tell you. I'd taken a star. Oh, I know you were I fucking was freaking there, out. I was just sitting there high, and, you're like, and I, you were calling me. I was like, why is he After calling me? After the third me? black guy came up to me and looking for you, I go, that's it. I've had it with these fucking black people looking for Lee. They don't like me. They ain't looking for a Jew. What the fuck is wrong with these black people? I don't know, but I love it. This guy had dreads. He was solid. He came right up to me, gave me a hug. Another <laughs> guy. The guy that called you looked like an M- uh, that guy from that group. I can't remember now. I'm sorry. He was dynamite. I thought maybe it was Renee. New York City. New or York something? City's got some dynamite. Renee and Carcion was there. New York City has. We have a great network in New York City. When the people come to the shows in New York City, they shake my hand. They look in my eyes. They hug me real fucking hard. They appreciate it, which makes me appreciate them. I never had this before. I can't even get on. I can't even get a fucking special on Netflix. I can't do nothing. But these people are coming to the show. So what the fuck do you think I feel like? What the fuck do you think? I got to work harder now than I've ever worked. Why do you think I'm here? Because I want to thank those people. I want to thank everybody who supports us. We got a great thing. We have our own network of people that help each other. Look at the fucking picture. Oh yeah, I got. Okay, I'll, let me zoom in on this because this is great. This is just amazing. This is the shit that. Listen, man. I get assholes on Twitter, and but guys, for the ninety percent, what we have going on on Twitter and Facebook amongst ourselves, it's fucking. Am- I'm telling you, I I, I want to cry sometimes. This picture right here by Lev Polyakov.com. This is one of the greatest. Pe- and he drew Fidel perfectly and super bad and fucking dimmy. And he must Harry. have looked at old videos yes, or something. So I gotta respect this guy. It's Lee killing the fucking devil. We're going to put this in a poster with his permission. We're going to get a hold of him. If uh, he's listening, I want him to contact us. This is just mind-boggling. Some other guy, great guy, and his sexy, beautiful girlfriend came to the shows. They gave me an album. They gave me Blizzard of Oz, the first album. They came to fucking two or three shows. What about the Blizzard twins? Or no, the the, the Wizard, the Dragon twins. The Dragon twins That was hysterical. The Dragon brothers. (laughs) They came with a boat of kung fu looking motherfuckers ready to tackle people. Like I said, man, I'm here tonight because I just couldn't wait till Monday with a guest. We love you with all our fucking hearts. And this is not about monetary. This is not about shit. It's not. And that's. This is about. I want to come. I'm with my family. I was just laying on the floor with Mercy watching fucking uh, Humpty Dumpty on <laughs> Halloween or some shit. And I, I just. I, I learn. Listen, man, I wouldn't want a life. Where I didn't learn things about life, but most importantly, I didn't want to. I can't imagine not learning things about myself every week. I like looking back on Sunday and going, wow, that was a great week. What did I learn about myself this week? You know, and this week for me, I learned that, and that's why I don't harp on it, man. God makes his choices, karma makes their choices, but you have one thing at the end of the day. And this is, I've always judged myself by this, and this is your friends. The people that are around you. I, the guys that came from Timmy Holloway to Lubes to... How's Lubes? Oh, he listen, I wasn't in the hotel. I got to admit something to you guys, all right? I get off the fucking plane. They take me to the hotel. I'm not at the hotel 10 minutes, and the phone rings upstairs. <laughs> I never, ever, ever hands, answer the hotel phone. The hotel phone rang? Oh, shit, that's old school. And I didn't answer. And right after that... The phone rang, and it was Lou's, and he goes, where, where are you? I go, I'm in my hotel room. I go, what time do you want to hook up? He goes, I, 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 I'm already downstairs. I go, park the car. I'll come down and get you. I went down. He had a tub of chicken cutlets, <laughs> parmesan, and a, bake, and a bowl of baked ziti. That's a way to greet I somebody. I sat right in front of him. I hugged him. We went up to my room. I ate the ziti in front of him. And uh, then he goes, oh, I forgot this ch- chocolate cake. My mom made chocolate cake for you, you know? And I go, tell your mom, thank you. Let's call her. And as I'm doing all this, I'm realizing I've been going to this kid's house to eat since 1970 fucking nine. How old were you? First time I walked in his house, I was 15 years old. I walked in his house a month before my mom died for a party we all 
played hooky. Do you remember what it looked like? Huh? Do you remember what the house looked like? Oh, yeah. I'm fascinated still, by still, that stuff. He like, still lives there. The house looks like it smells a certain way. He still lives there. He lives in the middle room. At that time, he shared a room with his older brother, with the medium brother. They had a... Uh, they had a basement that was all made for weights, all homemade lap machines, <laughs> all this shit. And I remember that he had a little party there, and I had uh, stolen some coke from some coke that was downstairs in my basement that my mother was holding on to for some people. And I took a little bit of it, and I had it hidden, and I, uh, that day I took it to the party. I took it with me to school. And I took it to the party, and I pulled him aside, and I go, you want to do some coke? And he's like, where'd you get it? And we we got uh, peppermint schnapps and vodka, and we made drinks, and we sat down, and I did a couple lines of Coke with him, and I threw the rest away, and it was it was our bond. It's been our bond forever. Coke? My life turned this way, and his, well, it was just something. When you, It's like Timmy Holloway. Me and Timmy Holloway did that uh, jewelry store. You know, that's a bond that'll last forever. We got away with it. You know, we both had something. There's something about a street bond. When you do something, there's something about a bond of human beings, but there's different bonds. It's like twins have a, a special bond. You know, when I see Timmy and everything else is forget, like I forget everything else. I just see that kid that we were both 16 in the same boat looking for a fucking direction. And here we are 30 years later. Who the fuck are we kidding? We're still looking for a direction. How long has Lou has been bringing you chicken cutlet and pasta to hotel rooms? Like you, you've For told me that he did, he did years. that like even when you were like Listen, coming man, to visit. When I, 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 the bigger the man, the bigger the mistake, and the bigger the story. You know, whatever the fuck you want to talk, I could look you in the eye and tell you as a man that if it wasn't for Jimmy Lubes, Roger and Timmy, Askelis. And George Kalidinsky, I would not be here today. I know that for a fact because <clears throat> Lubes has been feeding me and giving me 20s and 10s since I was uh, maybe 17. You know, 16 was the first time I went to his house. But when I started getting into trouble and needed rides and whatever, he's been there for me for all those rides. You know, I was telling uh, Mike Ascalis, we were sitting there talking, and I said, I go, there was a time when I used to take, I used to sleep in your backyard on the, on the, uh, you know, the fucking things where you take a suntan and you, you lay down, you know. Like lawn chairs lawn or chairs hammocks? Okay. In the winter, with a jacket on, with a hooded sweatshirt. And then I would wait till the morning, till everybody left for school, and I'd knock on the door, and Janine would give me breakfast, and I'd sneak in and take showers in the fucking basement, and she'd give me a clean shirt from her father's to wear. And I would have to avoid her father all day because then he would say, how did you get one of my shirts? You have no fucking idea. So, now, I know you and your stepfather didn't run on the best terms. Right. And I know you chose to go with the Benders because it would have upturned your life. But when you're sitting there homeless, none of you was like, okay, I'll go live with him. I'd be, I wouldn't like it, but... I wasn't. And there's no way I was going to give in to a guy that I was at, realm, at war with. Oh. <clears throat> there was no way. And, and I... I don't know. It was just that I could I could have gone to one. I, I didn't so want to. I didn't like, want to admit that I lose. Yeah. I had people that I could have gone to, you know. And uh, but I look at this kid Loops that in 1993, when I was starting comedy, he was bringing me, you know, little things. I remember one time I came. I went back on the road. I was in '98. You know, I would stay on people's floors and, and go into the New York Comedy Club and do spots. And I remember one night I was waiting for a bus and he pulled up. I can't lie to you. I had like maybe $18 in my pocket. I was still doing blow. He pulled up. He's like, what's up? Nothing. I'm going to the city. He goes, get him. I'll give you a ride. He goes, I got something for you in the back. Some Valiums. Let's do a bump. <laughs> you know, do you need money to get home? I mean, this week when I was home, he, he's the one that drove me to the cemetery. I had a, he wanted to pick me up and drive me to both gigs, both nights. And I told him, no, you know, I'll go with my friends, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just amazing to still have that support system. I don't ever want people to think that I was just out there. One thing that kept me alive was the support system I had. But because I had that support system, I also want, wanted to make them proud which has always been very important in my world, is making anybody 
who did something for me. Anybody who sat, like if I come to you and I go, dog, I'm in a bind. And you're like, what do you need? And I go, I got to get to San Diego by 10 o'clock. And you're like, you know what? Come on. You got weed? Let's go. And all of a sudden, on the way down, I go to hand you 50 bucks for gas. And you're like, don't worry about it. I can't never forget that. And then you drive me home. Let's say you're not even a comedian. Let's say you're just a lawyer and you do this for me. How do you think I feel? You just gave me a ride down there to, to do my dream. And you enjoyed it. And you had a good time. And, and you came back. I'll never forget those people that gave me rides. Fucking Falato last week. You know what? <laughs> you know what was? You know what the most special thing about shooting that special was? Tell me that the guy, the least likely. We all have something you want to do with your life, and then you go to the people that are closest to you, and you tell them. You go. You know what? I'm thinking of becoming a professional dick sucker. You know, I love eating <laughs> M and M's. You know, whatever the fuck you want to become. And let's say you go to four of your good friends. Two of them are going to tell you you're a fucking loser, and two of them are going to support you. You know, two of them are not going to say you're a loser. I don't want you to put it like that, but two of them are just going to raise the other possibilities. You know, you have a family. What are you going to do if you fail? And then you have two friends. Let's say out of those two friends, you have one friend that uh, is very, um, he's had shit going on in his life. But the other friend is a childhood friend who's a mess. What if this guy that was a mess, the least person in your life, drove you to gigs? What if that guy gave you a book once on stand-up comedy? What if that was Filato's cousin? In 1993, when I went back to New York and I didn't know what I was doing with my life, at 32 years old, guys, I had no idea what the fuck I was going to do with my life. I had been on stage a couple times. I, I was like that girl that fat shamed. I was telling people I was a comic. I was no fucking comic. I was getting on stage once a fucking month. I told him my dream. And for some reason, he would push me every day. You go to the city tonight and do comedy? Let's go. I'll give you a ride. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Now I'm in a bunch. Yeah. Now I'm in a fuck. Why do you think I push you with the jiu-jitsu? Where do you think I got that from? <laughs> from him. Yeah. Because I get it. I get when sometimes you need that person to say, come on. And now you're in a spot. Why did I fucking even tell this motherfucker I did, I did, I could do comedy for? Now Especially he's like when I, because I, when I'm like dreading jujitsu, if I don't have an ex, like if someone's offering you a ride, it's like you can't even say, oh, I ran out of gas, my car broke down, like that. I, okay, let me ask you this: When you first started comedy, did you enjoy it? Yes and no. When I, did you start? Like when did you stop dreading it? Or I, I you know what I didn't like about it that I sucked. Yeah. Nobody likes to suck. No, even if it's uh, jumping jacks. Nobody likes to suck at anything. But anybody who has a brain will go home and go, you know what? They'll go on YouTube. In today's society, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago when I was growing up, I couldn't do that. But they go on YouTube and they see somebody who is doing it. And they'll say, you know what? If he could do it, I could do it. That's the mentality. If he could do it, I could do it. Well, I'm going to try till I do it. And maybe if I don't fucking get it. At least I fucking try. Right. But that was why Falato was so special that he was there. Because it was like a representative of his family. Like it was, in other words, Rago was there. Only Falato was representing him. This is the guy that got me into comedy. This is why it was so special for me. And did you, like, have to ask Falato? I, I, like, I'm, I'm asking, thinking I know the answer. But a lot of times you'll, people will do something for you and then they'll ask for something in return. It doesn't seem like any of the people you mentioned did that. I mean, no. Maybe they did. I don't know. Not one of them. Not one of them. Not one of them. You know what they wanted from me? For me to do something with my life. That's what they, all those people that fed me and took me to rides and George. You know, George, I hadn't seen George in sophomore year in high school. I would communicate with him from time to time. One day in 1985. <laughs> so this is hitting me, man. <laughs> good. <laughs> One day in 1985, in 1984, 85, I bumped into <laughs> George, and he tells me that, uh, that you know, he's doing this and this. I got arrested that day. I called George up. He bails me out. He brings me to his house. That was the beginning of my life. That was the first time I didn't, I didn't get in trouble for three months. I really gave it a chance. You know, this was a kid who brought me into his fucking home. How many people bring you into their home? And after that, like, we were talking the other night on the way to New York in front of his new girlfriend. 
And we were talking about Aspen, like when he came to visit me, and then he came to Boulder, and then he came back for the fucking sentencing. And these are my friends of 30 fucking years that have been there for me. And, you know, when they come to the shows, and all of a sudden they, they, people say my name and the room erupts, I, it's got to do something for them if they're in the room. This is the same kid I fed and gave $2 for the bus for. And look at these people from the podcast coming out and applauding. It's a fucking great feeling in front of my friends. Do you like your friends coming or would you prefer they didn't? Certain ones. Okay. Certain ones. I don't mind if they come. Certain ones I could fucking just go off in front of them. Certain ones, me knowing they're in the room, drive me crazy. <laughs> because I know why they're there for. Are you? Is it you being self-conscious or you think they're going to ruin it? No, no, no. They're not going to ruin anything. Timmy came to both shows. No, no, no. Phenomenal. Well, no, him. No, I'm not saying the ones you don't want there. The one, I, I don't know. I, I just don't want the ones that are going to reminisce and breathe on my neck and do, be doing fucking blow. And, you know, they, they don't want to give me a chance with the people, the, with the podcast people. Right. They want to take over the stage over the podcast people and stand right there. I can't deal with that shit. It's, uh, it's interesting talking about, like, a change and all that. Because you asked me a few months ago, like, if I could be doing anything, what would I be doing? And I said, doing this. And then... We've been talking recently about what I'm going to do next. And a, an issue I had for my whole life was looking like looking forward, like not enjoying. And I've been I was thinking the other I was I got a little bit too high the other night and I was just like I don't know if I want to be a manager. Like I don't know I don't this is the first time kind of in my life that I don't know what I want. Okay, let me ask you it. this. Let me ask you this. No, nobody's saying manager. Let me ask you this. What if what if Netflix gets into the podcast business and they want to hire you for chief operations of network control because you know about podcasts? Oh, no, yeah. And that's this the, is leading to something. Lee. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And that used to, because I, I don't know what it is. That used to terrify me. But it, listen, the worst thing a man could do is think. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the worst thing, I, this was something that was told to me by a wise man when I was 19 years old and I was bleeding my, when I'm out of my asshole. The worst thing a man could do is think. The only thing a man is expected to do is get up every morning and do the best he can and move a little closer to reaching his fucking utopia. And that's mentally, spiritually, and physically. That's what you go for. I did not know that at 21, guys. I did not know that. I did not know that this is the mission. To be happy. That's it. That's the mission. To be fucking happy. To have the ability to go, you know what? I'm not flipping burgers in and out burgers, dog. I'm not doing that. This is what I'm doing. And to have the brain to know that this is what's not going to make you happy. And to take chances. There's just so many things that are part of a young man's fucking life. One of the worst things are thinking. I want you to write your goals. You know, I want you to have a clear vision of a 90-day, what am I going to do? But you don't know where this is going to end up, Lee. You're going to be, when I'm dead and fucking buried, one day you're going to look out a window, spark up a, a cigar or a joint, and you're going to go, look at what I'm doing today. All, and it all started in a fucking room, a dumb room with a Nazi fucking flag and Charles Bronson sitting across from some fat ex-felon that didn't know dick about dick. Because you're on the ground floor of something huge. This is communications. And this is something that's needed daily. Entertainment and communication. Yeah, and, and, and that's, it's great for me, but it, I've, I've, I've been talking with so many people now. Like, there's, there's one, and I'm, I'm going to respond to his email tomorrow. He, he's not sure if he should go to college for podcasting. And it's. Would you go to fucking college for podcasting? I don't know what to tell him. No! I, maybe, fucking no! It's the scholar, this is the college. Yeah. This is the college. And What's the co who's going to teach a podcasting class? Let me ask you. What fucking person is going to teach a fucking podcasting class that hasn't had a podcast for five years? I would only take 10 people's podcasting classes right now if they taught them. Nothing else. At a college degree level, yeah. 10 people's podcasting classes. Adam Carolla, what makes a successful fucking podcast? I wouldn't take my podcast class. I'm not a successful fucking podcast, but there are podcasts out there that are fucking successful. Do you think they went to college, you fucking moron? This is what the problem no, but is. You go for like sound engineering. Fuck sound engineering. This is how you learn sound engineering by people hitting your emails and going, Joey, I can't fucking hear you. Talk to Lee. We figure it the fuck out. 
Because they teach you that theory, but they're not going to teach you what the fuck we learned in five years, which is still what they're going to need to do. Right. So no matter how much fucking chalkboards and clapping of fucking erasers you do, the only way to get this is technicality. You know, there's a class in fucking Hollywood that you don't roll. They just teach you submissions. You do not roll. It's for people who do not want that, that physical contact. I learn how to do an arm bar. I do not fucking roll. That's great for theory. That's great for theory. Right. But the only way to get better at that is to roll around and have people get on top of you and twist your fucking fingers and poke you in the fucking eye. And the only way to learn this, the only way to learn anything in life is to fucking do it. If you want to do it while you're getting a little theory, but Lee, again, who's teaching these podcast class? Right. Who? Let me see who. Who? I've been a, I've been a consultant on podcast. You ain't shit. Because you didn't do this day in and day out. You weren't with us at 6 a.m. in the fucking morning in a fucking apartment smoking and yelling <laughs> with fucking foreigners throwing shit at you. You weren't there. So this is what I'm saying. Right, right now, this, if I was to take a podcasting class in 10 years, yeah. Because by that time, Cassius Morris could teach a fucking class. Right, yeah. Who knows more about when Cassius gets to his freshman year in college and he takes a podcasting class? He's going to get up after three days and go, you're all a bunch of fucking assholes. It won't even take three days, I don't think. It won't even take but, three days. But that's the thing. It's like, from the, I, from the minute I can remember, even as kids, you're, you're asked, like, what do you want to be when you grow up and all that. And so, how much uh, will you write? No, and all you dumb motherfuckers that are fine, would it be a fucking buy a man? How many of you is ready to climb a fucking ladder today? None of you is. You don't even know what the fuck you want to do when you're 18 and you go to fucking exactly. college. It is the, it is the worst fucking decision we make in our fucking lives because we do 50% of it for our parents more than that for yeah I'm, I'm just going with 50 Lee I'm just going with 50 yeah people go to college 50% for the parents 30% or 20% of what surrounds them like ah, ah, I'm gonna be an underwater biologist because a bunch of jerk offs in some class this is college this is USC this is San Diego State now. Now you're going out there to the beach. You have all these things to throw your mind off. You're not in high school no more. Mommy's not flipping your burgers and making your laundry. This all kicks into your day. So that underwater biology shit <laughs> becomes fucking sociology 101. You know what I'm saying? Psychology 3. Whatever the fuck you choose. You don't have. Come on. No. Come on. They want you to make a life decision at 18 years old. To what you want to do, and it's not even a life decision. It's a fucking life no, decision, but it, Lee. But it is. Are you paying? Are you paying fucking money right now for, for school no, loans? But that's, but that's my point. Yes, it's a life decision that yes. costs you hundred thousand yeah, dollars. That you goddamn right. So you fucking think about it. Does a child? It's not like okay, at eighteen. Change. Listen, come on. Who the fuck are you guys kidding? As a child, eighteen, you're a fucking child. I was a child at eighteen. Yeah, I thought I was in the mafia, and I thought I could do this and that, but I had the mind of a fucking child. And yes, there's some of us that are very special. They know what they're going to do at 18 or whatever. But those motherfuckers put a gun to their head at 38. Because I thought I did. I thought I knew. No, we all, Lee, every child, every 18-year-old child thinks they know what the fuck they want to do at 18. And they don't have a fucking idea. So, you know what? Worst case scenario, you go to school for four years and you take a major that could turn into anything else. Like a master's or maybe law school or maybe an, uh, whatever the other thing that they call it. That's the only thing I would decide. What would I do with Mercy if I was 50, 40 right now and I would be there for Mercy? You want me to tell her what I'd tell, tell her to do? Honest? Yeah. At 18? Go sell Toyotas. Something like that. For one year. I would make a, a child go into the workforce labor for one year. In something that they kind of liked. You know what I'm saying? Like something they You can always liked. get an internship. Yeah, but I want you to make money. I don't want you to be fucking interning. Fuck you working for free. Fuck that. I need for you to get up in the morning and know what it is to get $230 and know how to break it up. I live with mom and dad. I'm going to chip in 50. I'm going to put 30 towards my car, 25 towards my car insurance, 50 towards reefer. reefer. I want you to budget. Interning, I'm st I still got to give you Gitas. You got to learn how mo money moves when you're a child. Yeah, you definitely. You have to learn how yeah. money moves when you're a child. You have to learn to put money away when you're a child. Something I did not do. You have to learn to, to you know, there's so many things. You know, there's no paper routes today. I blame so much on not having paper routes. 
because it teaches you how to protect your shit, to how to collect, to how to sell, to how to upsell. You only get Sundays. For an extra 12 fucking cents, I'll give you the whole week. Okay, you learn all these things from selling a fucking newspaper. Yeah. From selling a fucking newspaper because nothing teaches you more about life than belly to belly sales. Belly to belly sales. So do you think like a year of that for because I don't like that I'm bad at that I'm bad at selling but what I am good at like what I think did help me was working uh, retail or customer service and then like I don't care if you go person. to GNC yeah I don't care if you go to GNC and learn about vitamins for a year and then you go to yourself you know what man I thought I wanted to be an astrologer now I want to get into fucking uh, sports medicine I want to help people do fucking sit ups I want to help fat people lose weight whatever the fuck it is but I don't think you really know. What you're doing at 18. I got to tell you an interesting story before I forget. Okay. I tell people this all the time. I go to jujitsu on Mondays. I go to Wednesdays on Higgins and I drop in on BJJ.com. People think I, I'm fucking, uh, you know, Andre Galval. So everybody always invites me to their places. And 90% of the times, I got to tell you something, I'm fucking petrified. I'm fucking petrified. Not because I'm just petrified, I'm out of my comfort zone. Once you're out of your comfort, and I talk about this all the time. So my plan for the last two weeks was to go to Marcelo Garcia's 11.30 to 12.30 Fundamental 2 class. That was the fucking plan. I go to Nopi and Anthony. Now, I find out the night before at the Pope's in town. They're going to lock up all these fucking streets, blah, blah, blah. Opie and Anthony ends like a fucking 10.35, 10.40. After the hugs and the pictures and the whole thing, I didn't hit fucking downstairs till 11 o'clock. I was fucking starving. I stopped. I got a Sabret hot dog. And then I went to hail the cab. It was 20 minutes to get a cab. I go, fuck it. I'm never going to make it to Marcelo. I even asked the guy. The guy goes, I got to go the long route. You won't be there till about 12. I said, fuck it. Let me just uh, give me a ride to the A train. So I took the A train. I went up and I walked around and I had my gi and shit. And I <laughs> went back and I stopped on the Jersey side at this... Uh, at this kettlebell place, this uh, whatever CrossFit place, and they had kettlebells, and I went up to the counter and I said, "Listen, how much to do the kettlebells?" And I goes, "25 bucks." I go, "Okay." He goes, "But you got to be back by 4:30." It was like 2:15, 2 o'clock. For a class said, or just to train? To train because at 4:30 the classes start uh, from seven to nine, and they're like CrossFit and uh, pulling yourself up TRX and all that shit. So I saw a UFC gym. In fact, my nephew, uh, Didi's nephew. Uh, Carlos, his son, worked over there when it first opened. So I went over there, and I go, how much are you guys charging? I go, you could buy a three-day pass, but you know what? Just come work out, bro. We're, we're straight here. And I go, do you have a beach, uh, jiu-jitsu class? They go, we have a no gi at 7, but we have a gi at 5.30. Oh, my God. I go, okay, I'll be here as I'm walking away. I go, what the fuck did I just say, you know? I was shitting my pants, Lee. You know me. I'm Plenty of, because 7.30, you could have been like, oh, I'll be late for my yeah, show. Yeah, but 5 o'clock was right there. I went... And uh, I went home, and I wrote, and I spoke to some people, and I thought about it, and I walked over there at 5. I got a protein drink, and I took my little energy pill, and I walked over there. Lee, the first 10 minutes were hell. He made this run. I had to run in front of all these young kids. You said it was on, like, the third floor, too, right? Uh, it was on the third floor, which gives me fucking anxiety as it is. <laughs> but when I walk in, I saw the guy from, from Naughty by Nature, Trek. His kids go there. Oh, cool. There a lot of celebrities, a lot of football players and basketball players live in Edgewater and uh, Fort Lee and all that. So I go upstairs and I walk in. There's three guys. And I go, perfect. This will be a small class. Oh, fuck. At about 528, eight kids walk in. And one guy's like, Joey, how are you? Oh, my God. We're listening to the podcast. I ran. I did a couple hip escapes. I almost had a heart attack. No, I didn't even do the. I didn't even get to the hip escapes. I was out of breath from just running and doing something else he was making us do. And then he made us do uh, getting out of your guard, 50%. Oh, my God. I was so petrified. But I got to tell you something, Lee. Everybody in there was the nicest person in the world. Everyone's Everyone always nice. Kids. The fucking teacher, his name is Karuma Anderson, Karuma Santos, was so fucking good. He was so good. I left there. I was drenched. I mean, my knee pads under my gi were wet. I rolled and rolled and rolled, and they taught me how to do half guard and the deep half. 
And I had such a good time. I didn't, I, I, I go, can I give you anything? He goes, no, no, it's on me. Thank you for coming. I went right downstairs and I booked a private and I came back the next day at two o'clock. So two days, the thing that I hated the most, that I, I was petrified of, I fucking went and did. And I gotta tell you something, Lee, I had a fucking great time. I had a great, and now every time I go into that area, you know what, I'm gonna go see this fucking Anderson Karuma guy. Cause he was that fucking good. He taught me some fucking tremendous shit. Not to mention, I was drenched. I love when I'm work out and I'm drenched. There's one thing for your t-shirt to be wet. There's one thing from the top of your pants to be wet. There's nothing when your knee pads and your underwear are wet. You're like, oh. God damn. Well, thank you for that light gi, by the way. That saved me the other day. Did it? Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. But Oh, the Santa Bolt. Yeah. Oh, those is that Santa Bolt? Yeah, those are the Higa Machado. Oh, my Higas. God. Those are good. They're really ultra lightweight, man. Ultra fucking light in the summers. There's a gear I have that's like a fucking like a like a fucking a fur. I think that's what you gave me too. The first one. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's a normal one. That's heavy as fuck. Yeah. But do you, do you like going to see different teachers? Because I always hear do, do, do people talking about that. Like the, they go here and they go here, and I'm like, that's a lot of money to be spending on jujitsu, but there must be a benefit to it. You know, John Evan gives me a flat, which is very cheap because I was with him before. So he goes, just pay me what you were paying me before. VMAC gives me an individual rate, 15, 20 bucks. For, but John Budd, he's worth every fucking dollar. And just for the school, man, they're a neighborhood school. So if I go in there for, I spend 200 a month on jujitsu, it's a lot. And I don't give a fuck. It's, I threw away thousands a month on cocaine. Thousands. I'm spending 200 on something I love doing. We give the other guy 20 bucks, 15 bucks for the kettlebells. Yeah, that's cool. What do I give a fuck? Yeah. It's worth every penny. It's not like I go out to dinners or I go to fucking premieres or I, I know, got but, helicopter rides. But there's kids who like aren't making a lot of money doing this too. And it's just it's crazy. But they are or they aren't. They aren't that like No, yeah, they're, there's they're, no money in yeah. jujitsu. But you have to contribute and you have to help and you go to these schools and, and listen, these schools are your community. I started at VMAC. When the schedule didn't suit my needs and I had to go elsewhere, it hurt my feelings too. Then I got the knee surgery. I just I love John Bud and Marcelo. And I love John Evan over there and I love fucking Hassan and my buddy Zach. I love all those guys with all my fucking heart, man. But Egan was down in Beverly Hills by Hollywood where I had to go. I had a relationship with him from before. That's where I went. I don't like going over the hill for jiu-jitsu. I like keeping it in my neighbor. I'm a neighborhood fucking guy. You support the things in your neighborhood. Oh, no, but I'm saying, like, when do you like going to John Budd for one thing and then Hegan for another? Is it kind of cool seeing how different people teach? You know what, man? For me, it's great that I'm just involved. Yeah. And once my schedule adapts and, and VMAC adds day classes on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll just go to VMAC. Happier than shit. VMAC is a school that's coming up. They, they, they try. It's that neighborhood school. They charge you 70 bucks a month. Yeah. 70 bucks a month for jujitsu. You know, that's an, and they do barbecues and they get together. They just all went to a wedding this week and they do little things, man. And that's what part of this is. When I was doing coke, yeah, people call you up, hey, you want to party? But besides that, people never hit me up and go, hey, man, you want to go exercise today or you want to go uh, do kickboxing? Fucking jujitsu. Everywhere I go, somebody sends me an email and says, hey, man, you're a big guy like me. I'm a black belt. You want me to teach you some big guy stuff? What the fuck is that? I'm not a fucking no, no special person for them to reach, open up. That's jujitsu. That's why I break your balls about it. Because it's a different community. It's a different feel. It's what I've been yearning. For 30 years, this is what I've been looking for. I didn't find it with comics. I didn't find it with comics. Because 50% of them are there to be your friend. And the other 50% are hoping you slip on a fucking banana peel and die. So there's no camaraderie there for me. There never right. really was. But if you're in this area, man, I had a great time with Kimura and the guy, the Brian Garcia guy that runs the UFC gym, he fucking opened up his heart. You know, listen, everybody's always talking about how they're heavy, they're sick, this and that. The answer's right in front of you. These people are not there to hurt you at these gyms. Some of them are scumbags, but some people are genuinely there to go, hey, man, if you want to help me help you lose weight, I can help you. What's the matter, Lee? What? What the fuck? You're sitting there <laughs> blinking like a fucking... <laughs> this is hitting me, I think. It's not fucking hitting you. I don't see no devils and no stars yet. You're going to put some fucking music on or you're going to sure. sit there? It's fucking Monday morning, cocksuckers. Get your shit together. But the whole thing is I got out of my comfort zone. And I feel fucking great about it. I really do. I had a... This was a, one of the best weekends ever. I got to see my friends. 
I went to Rudy's twice. I had some fucking uh, muscles marinara. I had some, oh my God, the Galama was off the fucking chain. There you go. No raviolis? No, I don't go to fucking New York to eat raviolis. Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my god. We got a live one tonight. I gotta get up and I'll tell you if I'm high. Hold on. Leave it up, leave it up, will you? Somebody. Somebody twice as smart as I. How come you're always that retard that bumps into the fucking DJ booth? You're always that fucking retard. The DJ booth is the, is the entire operation. You always hit the fucking thing with your finger. Why is your finger even close to the fucking... Because it changes the camera, too. Because you leave... Don't worry about changing the fucking camera. Just leave the music. The music is the most important thing. I don't oh care God. about the fucking camera. The hell's the matter with you, cocksucker? Oh, I won't stop watering. You what? My eye won't stop watering. I know. What's wrong with your eyeballs? You think you got that thing on your left eye again? You got that no, fungus I don't. in your eye again? Yes, you My do. Eye's fine. Go look in the mirror. It's I know up it's again. fine. I know it's not. Holy shit. What? This is fun. Yeah, it's fun. What? The f I've been telling you for years, there's nothing wrong with a good head of acid. You know what I'm saying? Go home. <laughs> go home, watch a couple of fucking episodes of Narco, go out and stab somebody in your fucking acid fucking reflux, you know. Oh, my God. What the hell's the matter with you, man? But it was great. I, uh, I learned a lot. Vegas was great, the special. I don't know when, you know, it's just all this, it's just shit we have in the, I still got a CD I taped in D.C., that's ready to release. We're just ready to, for all the pieces. Now the next mission is the book with Gordon. Fuck That's you. it. That's the next fucking mission. Now, I already started looking at it when I was in fucking uh, New York. Just little notes. It's going to be tough. But I got to really focus on my writing now. So I'm going to set two hours a day just to fucking write from now on. That's it. Now that I got this other on shit. On the book or just everything? Everything in general. I really have to. There's days I write a long time. Then... One day I travel and I won't write. And that's the whole thing. You got to work the fucking same muscle every day. It's really important. So stop looking up at the fucking ceiling, Lee. There's nothing up at the ceiling like that retard that looks up. What are you looking up for? Next thing <laughs> you're going to go, you're going to go to Philly and have the Pope touch you in the head. Take it, heal you. Did you watch any of the Pope stuff? It was on at the gym. And I'm, I'm Jewish, man. I understand that it's a big deal for some people. I don't understand to what I don't understand waiting in line for twelve hours. But who waited in line for twelve hours? They were saying people in Philly. That's what CNN was saying. People were there from like six thirty to six thirty. Well, people came from all over the world, I suppose, or all the other states. A fan. I read about a family who came Is to the he, Volkswagen like, bus. I know he's not God, but he's like the level down from God, isn't that supposedly like? I don't know. I don't fucking know. He's just a grand high poop. He seems cool. People seem to like him. Well, oh, he's a uh, hip. That's what they say, he's hip or whatever. As an old school Catholic, how do you feel? I don't. I can't lie to you. For me, religion is something that you do on your own. It should be. It should be. I like it on my own. I'll go to church. I'll go put a couple of dollars in the basket. I'll eat the fucking cookie. I'll hit a confession from time to time. But I think it's how you hold yourself on a daily fucking basis. That's my religion. That's my religion. How you... You know, hold yourself up on a fucking daily basis. This time of year is always weird because it's like the high holidays. It's Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. A lot of Jews on the flight today. A uh, lot just, of them. A lot of them. And I don't know, man. My my parents fought about it. My dad was less religious. My mom was more. So that was weird. And then it always creeped me out how, like, people would go there just to be seen. Like, just because they have to bring in chairs. So did they have you to bring feel in... that also growing up, that most people were there to be seen? I don't know. I don't think I was, I don't think, I don't think I was eight, but I remember going in high school and being very up. It's just like, it's two days out of the year that we're only let's, there. Hold on. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go for it. Because I say this to Rogan. He always, I could see that he always, do you feel that a lot, that most of the things people do are to be seen? Or is it me by myself and my fucking 20-year cocaine paranoia? I think you point out the more minute ones. 
I think there's like stuff like that that's like oh bl- that's blatant is kind of I think some people see, but then I think it's just based on experience because like I'll be watching reality TV with Paula and I'll point out, hey, they made her say that, hey, they reshot that, well, like, just something I can see or the, like the audio is weird, and th- she wouldn't notice because that's she hasn't spent hours looking at that. So you've l- spent hours and hours looking at people to make fun of them in a way or to tell comedy about them. So you probably are more honed in on it. I would I would think. When I was uh, when I first went to church, I couldn't figure out why people would close their eyes. And, oh God! And spin around and make believe like the whole. You know, I couldn't figure it out. And I started closing my eyes, and I realized nothing fucking happened. The only one that does look cool are, and I, I know there's probably a better way to say this, but the black churches, like the ones where they're singing and having a good time, that seems like a fun way to go. I've been to those. Tremendous. Like, uh, I had a friend that used to go. One oh, day my God. That seems go like the way to do it. Listen, church, religion is what you believe in your heart. How you act yourself accordingly, whatever the fuck you believe in. I don't want to sit here and preach to people what the fuck God is or whatever. Because everybody, to everybody, everybody has a different God or maybe no God at all. I know there's something out there. I know there's a karma in my world, in my life. I know that karma has to do a lot with things, and I know that there's something out there. I was shown something early on, and I know there's something out there. Whether I believe or not, I know it. I feel it for me. But I don't think... I didn't like going to church every Sunday. You went every Sunday? I went uh, for a few years every Sunday, and I didn't like it either. I thought that when I got to Boulder was the first time it really disgusted me. That's the first time church fucking disgusted me. Like they all go on Christmas or Easter or something and never go over again? You know who was a good Catholic? I'm going to tell you who was a very, very good Catholic in my life, my old in-laws. The Kings? Yeah. Very good Catholics. Ray and Lorraine, very good Catholics. Went to church. They did the stipend. You know, they had the priest over once a week, but he cursed. He was in Vietnam. You know, it's just a belief that he had. And uh, I liked him. I went to his church, Sacred Heart in Boulder. It's where I got married. I didn't like the Gentiles that went, that sat in the front, that were involved with the church. And there was one guy in particular, a realtor, that was cheating on his wife with this young chick. His wife was atrocious. I mean, I'd shoot her. I wouldn't cheat on it at that point, but he was cheating on her. But he would sit in the front and act like he was the best Christian. And one day, like he went to give me like a lecture, and I told him, like, do me a favor, go fuck yourself. Right. You got some pair of fucking balls. Those are the people that tick me off. And that's seventy percent of religious people. You think it's that high? Well, okay. Go to New York Forty Second Street at eight in the morning when I was a kid. 50% of the clientele in the fucking uh, boxes jerking off were Hasidic Jews, Lee. Yeah. Running out of there with that dirty jacket with a napkin would come on it to go throw away or to take it back to the synagogue, okay? And, you know, or whatever the fuck they do with it. You know, Lee, uh, these, these uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to say and I don't want to embarrass anybody. These Arabian prints, when they come over, they got wives. What do you think they come over here? Did you hear about the one that just happened in L.A., I think? It was either L.A. or Florida. I forget. I, I don't know. Where, like, this girl, like, was trying to escape the, the compound. Yeah. And they, and they called and had to have him arrested. Why do you think? What well, do you think these Japanese guys come over? You think they come over to play cards in Vegas? They come over and they get 12 blondes that suck dick for a living, Jack. Five grand a night. That's what they want. They don't want no misunderstandings. They don't want no amateurs. They don't want none of Cosby's rejects. They don't want nothing. They don't want nothing. They want perfect. Well, you know, this is what they people do for 2,000 fucking years, Lee. Do you think Cosby ever like, a, give his word of approval on like a hooker? Please, I don't fucking know. I'm just <laughs> saying. Like you did with the jello pop? Why you got to fucking throw me off my beat here? I'm Sorry. just as high as you, cocksucker. No, but it's, it's um, I don't know. And I'm not going to say that. I don't know if it's 70% of that. How 70%. Cause, cause I'm telling people, you, all these yeah. religious people that, that listen. All oh, these people so that, that push their fucking religious on you or yeah. at one time correct you. You know, uh, the guy who fucking sent me the email last week that uh, me and my wife walked out with a bunch of women. You don't. You should do comedy like Cosby. Cosby's a rapist, motherfucker. You know, there's, there's a majority of people that put religion, that's their front, is their religious beliefs and shit. But meanwhile, in their personal lives, they're pieces of shit. They're pieces of fucking shit. Those are the ones that fucking torment me. Those are the ones that eventually I say, hey, stop, stop. 
Stop. Stop with the ukulele. My cousin Al Coelho. I loved Al. Al was family. Since I was a little boy, I knew the mother, the grandmother. It always is kind of scary when you look like Al went to church with the tambourine, the pastor. Lord have mercy, prayers before dinner. Meanwhile, he's snorting coke, coke, eating pills, and getting his dick sucked at the dealership. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you embarrassing me with this religious shit? Me, I tell you what my beliefs are, and I tell you what I've done. I was a thief. The dudes who got killed next to Jesus were fucking thieves. I'm not blaming none of that shit. I'm a thief piece of shit. But in my whole heart, the whole time, I would think about religion. I wouldn't think about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like at night when I was going to sleep, I would think of all the things I've done, and then I would think of religion, and i get really fucking sad. Today, I baptize my daughter. I fucking go to church on my own very loosely. I do not talk about it. I don't push it on my wife. There's a 730 mass. I tell her I got to take a ride. That's how special fucking I do it. I go. I sit in the back. I get emotional. It brings me back to my childhood. I get in my car. I go home, and nobody knows I did it. Do you understand I, I consider going this week. But I felt like a hypocrite. To temple. Yeah. You have to go. Lee, go and get your roots. These are your roots. This is who the fuck you are. I'm not but then I'm the person that I go. hated when I was eight. Who when I was gives 16. a fuck? Now go remind yourself why you hated yourself. On the way I'll call me and go, Joey, let's eat a star and fuck these two <laughs> in the ass. Right or wrong, but then why not walk in and see where you came from? Why not walk in? Maybe it'll give you an idea. Maybe it'll make you go over there and do a podcast. That's probably where I was most bored, if I think about it. Sure. Because I don't speak Hebrew. So those hours. Of sitting there. Just doing nothing. Just wishing for it to be over. Just praying. That's all I would pray for is for it to be over. You know what I would do when I'd sit in church as a child? I remember, because I went to Catholic school, so you had religious studies. So while I was in church... I would daydream about the lesson they taught us. And I would think about what Jesus, you know, whatever the fuck story they had that day about Moses or the Corinthians, whatever the fuck. (laughs) I would think about that, you know. I don't know. Religion's weird with me. I just, I don't like people who push it on me. I don't like none of that stuff. You're a religious person. Keep it to yourself. Keep your belief to yourself. And don't talk about it. Let me see you live it. It's weird when people have that in their, like, Twitter profile. They're like, God first or whatever. Okay, like, okay. Good. Let me say it. But oh, maybe, this is going to be weird. And there's a picture of you on a boat with your tits out on a ship with some fucking uh, fake producer or some shit. That's the shit that bothers me, man. Everything else, I don't care what people do. Listen, in Bold, I had a friend who was a Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. He lived down the block from me. He stunk. But the dude was solid as fucking molasses, man. He talked to you from the heart. And you know what was special about him? He never said nothing to you about being a Hare Krishna. He never said nothing to Did you. Did he wear, like, the robes around he you? He had the hairdo, the fucking thing. He stunk, the shoes. But he was solid. What are you going to do, man? People have their own choices in life. As long as they don't invite me and push it on me after the third time, especially if I'm high and I'm having a bad day, because you're always, like, on, and you're in, and at, at 3 o'clock in the daytime, your mind's always on fire. You're thinking about the end of your day, what's going to happen tomorrow, your scheduling, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, I bump into a Jehovah. There was a Jehovah Witness that was coming to North Hollywood. I had this guy strung out for maybe four or five months. You I think I was that? there when, I, when he came a couple of times. I told you. I had him on a string. I talked to him for two minutes, and the phone would ring. Hold on. Let me, let me call you back. Listen, I got to catch you next week, and I leave. I had him on a string because he spoke to me correctly. It's when he showed up with a partner that it pissed me off. Two times he showed up solo. And I spoke to him about whatever. We just kept it on a fucking very natural basis. Films, his religion, how long he had done it for, why he did it, that he was a Catholic or whatever the fuck he was, and then something always happened. But once he showed up with the partner to shake me down, that's when the relationship ended. Once they show up with two or three... They cross the line. Yeah, they cross the fucking line. You want to show up fucking solo and talk to me about fucking Jehovah? What is this, an ambush? What are you doing? You trying to crack funnies? <laughs> Let me give some shout outs here. I want to give a shout out to all my buddies. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Timmy Holloway. It's weird. We were in New York last week, and it was the anniversary of us uh, doing our thing when we were kids. And I'm proud of you, and you look good. I also want to give a shout out to K Ja, my man in Vegas who hooked us up. Oh, yeah. Bad motherfucking shit. 
I uh, had put the note in my pocket and I forgot it and I found it on my desk. So sorry it's late, but I love you. David Christians, Davin, you cocksucker, trying to ask me if I just woke up. My man, the greatest blind comedian working, Angel Adorno out there and his beautiful wife. The Chinese dragons in New York who showed up. I love you little Chinese motherfuckers. Renee and Carcion with his band of fucking hooligans and the dude who was getting married. My main man, the guy who showed up with the Blizzard of Oz album. I looked at that album and almost fucking broke down into tears even tonight. Harry Sakinri, my main man in uh, Glendale, the Flying Armenian. Dustin Zawacki, John Fentros, always with us. Joe Skibera. And again, I want to thank Bruce Garcia at the UFC gym at Edgewater. And my main man, Anderson Karuma Santos, for taking good care of me. And my man, Lev Polykevav. Dot com. He's uh, Levpo at Twitter if you want to hit him up and follow him. The guy does some great fucking artwork, you know what I'm saying? So that's it, Lisa. I had it was a two hard. It was, I was only home two out of ten fucking days. And I did it. I couldn't believe. I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown along the way. Oh, you were talking to me about Friday night. Okay. <laughs> Guys, listen. I get fucking bored. The New York show started at 11.40. Again, 11.45. That must be torture for when you. When I pulled up at 11.45, there was still a line outside. They don't even start seating until 10 to 12, and the show starts like a 10 after 12. It's a real New York City show. I work for that fucking dollar on that show. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> yeah, fuck. So you probably didn't get on until close to one? I can't hold that. You know me. By fucking 9 o'clock, I got to pop a star. I got to get the blood going. You're only human. Things are happening. I pop like two stars. Get the blood going. From there, I said, fuck it. Let me get the blood going. I pop two more <laughs> stars. I leave the house with five, a total of three stars. I had already popped five. Wait. My brother picked me up at 10. I popped two stars. And then in the car, I popped two more fucking stars. Now I'm 10 minutes away from going up on stage for the first show in New York City Friday night. I go in my pocket, the phone's ringing, I go and I go, what's this lump in my pocket? And it's a piece of paper with a star that's starting to melt. I, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to let a fucking good THC star melt. So I pop this motherfucker on stage. Like the church soldier you are. It's New York City. When you go on stage in New York City, you got to go up there and fucking throw fucking kazams at them. I went out there Friday like a fucking devil. 12, 14, 16 minutes in, Lee... I feel like I am about to pass out. I get nauseated. My stomach just drops to a certain level of nausea. I can feel the temperature in my body changing, but the heat rising in my head. Oh my God, sweat's coming from parts of my body that haven't had sweat on it in years at that night, part of the night. It's just like weird. Like I'm doing jujitsu sweating on stage all of a sudden. I'm looking to my left on this side of stage, fucking packed house. And all of a sudden, my vision goes, Oh, no. In the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm about to pass <laughs> out. I really want Lee. No shit. And they knew it. The audience knew. So were you still talking? Still talking, but kind of incoherently. And all of a sudden, I... And I just went into a bit or something, and it saved me. And I felt myself work, and I kept breathing. I kept saying, oh Joe, God. just breathe. And I kept going through it. And then after about six minutes, I told the audience what had happened. And they caught it. They started laughing. They saw the sweat on my body. It was fucking amazing. I fucking loved it, Lee. I love did it. Did that I make you want to do edibles before you go on stage? No. No. I'm not doing it fucking no more until Tuesday. <laughs> before the laugh factory. No more until Tuesday. <laughs> no. I, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm out of stars. And, you know, we've eaten a fucking 2,000 stars in two weeks. Like, it's over. We have to give the stars a break. I'm embarrassed to even hit the guy up anymore, my main man. He hit me up today saying hello and stuff like that. But I'm embarrassed to even fucking... Uh... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Lee? How know. you feeling, motherfucker? Oh, good. Huh? You feeling good, right? Yeah. I don't think it's really... Listen, let me tell you the story. I'm at the fucking stand. I'm mind my own business. Guy comes in, Joey, he was there last year, gives me a hug. I love this kid. I love him. Everything about him. I don't know what his name is, and it doesn't really fucking matter. And all of a sudden, I don't know what he goes, I got acid. 
Oh, no. I go, fuck it. Let's see what you got. And he had a whole sheet with Einstein on it. That was a piece of Einstein's head you had. What part? Like the hair over here, over to the fucking. Oh, it's good. Part. Maybe he, I'll grow hair then. Yeah, That'd be cool. So we fucking. He gave me two pieces. As soon as he was gonna, eat, as soon as he was giving it to me, he goes, make sure one of them is for Lee. That's how much people love you. So I said, <laughs> fuck it. Now I was in my kitchen at the hotel, and the pieces of paper fell out <gasps> on the floor, and I caught it because they could fucking disappear. And I got it, and I put it under my Jersey Mike's point card, where it was nice and tight, and I put a piece of tissue in there so it couldn't fucking fall out. And boom, there we are. Here we are. A little acid oil for us. But you know what? It's not the acid that I used to get as a kid. We dropped it at nine something. It's 1026. I'm not seeing nothing. But we haven't played any music yet. What do you want to play? Let's play some fucking music. Just to get this fucking party started. I didn't bring my vapor pen, but we got a fucking, we got a jar of that gorilla. Biscuit, OG, whatever. You want to smoke more on top of this? This is what you count. This is how you fire oh, the fire, bro. Dog. Oh my God. This is how you fire the fire. What we're going to do is we're going to do the pot. We're going to put a song on, something to trip to. You want to put something heavy on? Fuck it. Something really heavy? Extra heavy. Deep, deep, deep heavy. How deep? All right, let's plant <laughs> Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Just for the fucking lyrics. And then we'll blast into some... Uh, Sabbath, bloody Sabbath? Maybe some fucking brain salad surgery by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer or something like that. I don't fucking know, Lee. Fuck, they took it down. Hold on. They didn't take it down. That thing lives on this. Oh, no, I'll find it somewhere else. It's just the one we had saved. Watch the beginning of this. It's fucking... The guitar is tremendous. Oh, no, don't do it. Ah. That's how you do it, cocksuckers. Oh, shit. I hope you're with me, motherfuckers. Monday morning, September 28th, October's coming. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? It's the church, bitch. Edibles, acid oil, a fucking number, and 10 days of fucking Vegas and New York City. And I'm still taking bitches. Fuck it. Grab your balls. It's going to be a beautiful motherfucking week. For YouTube, but fuck it. Listen, man, it was a great fucking week. That's all I want to say. And I, and I got the reason why I'm doing this. I, I really, uh, we're lucky. We're fucking lucky, man. When I was up on 148th Street walking around and I walked up that hill, I can't tell you how lucky we are that we have each other and that we're growing every day. We grow together on the show and we see different things. And hey, people come and people go. I get it, man. I don't give a fuck. As long as you got something and you fucking... But this weekend, I really learned about friendship again. I, uh, I never forget about it. I always keep it dear to my fucking heart because I saw the gift of it as a child, and it blossomed. And uh, just sitting across from Timmy and talking to him and sitting across from Lubes this week uh, and uh, going to dinner with Veneri and James and just seeing my friends, I don't know, it makes me... Uh, Validate. I don't know. It just really makes you value the gift of friendship, man. You have a friend. You know, everybody always says, I don't have enough friends. I just got an email a few weeks ago. A guy said he was shy and he has friends, but he doesn't know how to. And I go, you know what? To have good friends, you got to be a good friend. That's it. That's the bottom fucking line. You know, you want a guy to like you. You want to build a bond with somebody. You got to pick up the fucking phone. You got to invite him to do shit. And that's how you build bonds, you know? Anybody could uh, build a fucking, be fake friends. You know, I hate this Hollywood fake friend shit. It's scary to invite. Like, I'm I'm a shy person, too. Like, I don't have many friends outside of this. Like, I'll invite somebody. To, ugh, it's, it's, I, I, but, it's hard listen, to imagine man, you do that. We meet people. We meet different people. You meet ten people if you're normal. 
you're going to like three of them, correct? Maybe. I mean, three yeah. people you're going to like, right? Maybe you have the same, uh, not the same, uh, yeah. Interest. Yeah. yeah, you have the same fucking interest, whatever the fuck it is. You pursue it. You keep in touch with them. You let them know you have their back. For those kids that came to get me at the hotel and whatever, let me tell you something. I know that I could ask them for anything. I don't want nothing from them. But that's 30 years. They're not around because they're fake friends or they're like, hi, we knew each other in the eighth grade. Oh, my God, my son loves you. No, fuck that. They've been there since day one. They fed me when there was nothing there. There was no reason to feed me. There was no reason for them to fucking invite me to their house. I was just a fucking dirty kid from the neighborhood that was a thief. But somewhere in their fucking, somewhere in their soul, they fucking gave me a chance. They gave me a chance, bro, and a lot of people didn't. So I'm really happy to have that. And if you have that in your life, those certain people, maybe you're off the track with them, pick up the fucking phone and that's it. Because, like I've said a thousand times, all you need is three people in your life. See, what happened was that show Friends fucked every young man up after that. Everybody wants to hang out with eight people. Oh, my God, and have parties and go on vacations. Yeah. Fuck that noise. Three motherfuckers, somebody gets killed, nobody knows nothing. All those movies, right? When they go on on bachelor parties, they, guys, they kill the stripper, now you got to worry about eight people. It's a joke, but what I'm saying is, in reality, uh -huh. man, the gift of friendship is fucking beautiful. I'm very fortunate to uh, they have really seen it from the inside out. A lot of people never get to see the gift of friendship from the inside out. So, what do you think, fucko? I think it's pretty cool. I don't have. You want to smoke another like joint? Not really. Why don't we smoke another number? Set this mother, set bro, the pigeons loose, bro. I don't what? know how I'm getting home. You know how you're getting home. You're fine. Oh you my god. You weigh 50 milligrams of. 200 milligrams. Oh fucking stop it! Stop it! It's always this. It's always that. The rappers are right there, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the court. What are you looking for? Nothing. I ain't looking for dick. Every time I ask you, you sit there like I'm on. Remember, I'm gonna be in Toledo, Ohio this weekend <laughs> at the Funny Bone. But listen, anyway, let's start from scratch here. This weekend, when I went down to uh, to New York, I actually missed the hemp protein, the on it chocolate hemp protein. I got the recipe down so good now, with the ice cubes. How many ice cubes? With the water? With the banana? That is the best fucking, I, and I've had other proteins. Other companies say, hey, try our protein. I've tried it. I like the chocolate flavor. On it has the best fucking hemp cocoa fucking protein you'll ever taste. And they say the hemp is better for you and your stomach. I don't know nothing about this. I just know I never get clogged up. None of that stuff. On it has some great fucking products. They really do. Today, I took the Shroom Tech. And I also took the one, uh, the thing, before I got Turn on the plane, Manini. I only got one package left because it's a six-hour fucking flight, and I didn't sleep last night. What's it called? Turn around 180. Right. I put that right in the water. As soon as they came, the lady's like, what do you want, a mimosa? No, give me fucking water, bitch. She gave me a little container of water. I put it right in there. I shook that Spicy. motherfucker. I drank it. I had already two stars in me. I don't have time for chitter-chatter. I popped that whole fucking gallon of uh, little eight, 16-ounce water with the 180. Listen, guys, I, went, I had my little breakfast. I went to sleep for three hours to sleep at near mass. I only took an hour and a half nap today. I'm here with you guys. That's I don't have no... You see, oh, I'm so jet-lagged. That fuck, that's for fucking pussies. Six hours there, six hours back. I didn't sleep the night before. Save it for somebody else. That's the power of fucking on it. The proof is in the pudding. Look at my fucking eyes. And I came up and been playing with the fucking two-and-a-half-year-old. So don't fucking tell me. Go to onit.com, whether it's a shroom tech sport... The turnaround 180, the alpha brain, which is basically the fucking turn of 180 with just different stuff in it. That's all this is. Alpha brain even helps when you fly against jet lag. Not that I'm one of those guys that's going to sit there and cry, yeah, I'm jet lag. No, I'm not one of those fucking alpha fruitcakes. Do me a favor. Go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off on your first order. If you fly a lot, honor is the way to fucking go. Even if you just want to lift weights or whatever, whatever you want to do, walk around the neighborhood. On it, protein powder, the hemp protein, as good as it gets. That shroom tech, when I fly, look at me, I'm not sick. People fly, they get sick. The shroom tech, uh, not the immune. immune. Again, there you have it, people. So the proof is in the pudding. I don't give a fuck what you think. For you guys that are single, you know, you go home at night, you got to eat fast food, you don't know what the hell to eat. I got an idea for you. How about some Blue Apron? 
Blue Apron's got some delicious, nutritious meals. But the best thing is, it's gourmet recipes and all fresh ingredients. All you need to do is make them, and they get delivered right to your door. Blue Apron, let me tell you what they got this week for the two-person plan. I don't care how lonely you are. You could always find some fucking mook to come over and eat. They got the pan-seared uh, steaks and the Cajun catfish. Are you fucking kidding me or not? Or are you kidding me or what? Gets delivered right to your door. All you got to do is take it out of the box, put out your frying pan, your baking pan, whatever it calls for. Put, they even send you the seasonings. You do everything. They do everything. All you got to do is put it together. They tell you 425 for 16 and a half minutes. They tell you everything. A fucking Momo can figure this out. Okay? So what you do is, that's for the two-person plan. Let's say you got a family of four. Let me tell you what they got. They got shepherd's pie. They got chicken, chicken press tortas. I mean, come on. Who can live with these things? Because I don't know how to make a chicken torta nice and pressed with different cheeses. They always got nice salad. Everything is always on the healthy side. The calories. I mean, this Between is Between 500 great. and 700 calories. Between 500 and 700 calories a meal. Yeah, they saw some bum on there twitting to Joe Rogan, me, and whatever. That the thing. Let me tell you something. I get these sent to me. I love them. I fucking love them. I can name like 10 dishes. The tilapia they sent me was delicious. They sent me those tacos, deli- everything I've gotten from them that I have cooked in that house has been, del- and my wife makes the bok choys and all that. She likes that stuff when I'm out of town. So do me a favor, all right? I'm doing, I'm doing you a solid again, as our listeners will get two meals for free. Go to blueapron.com slash Joey and start cooking incredible meals at home with blueapron.com. So please go to blueapron.com. Look at the menus. Look at the prices. You're going to be blown away, but I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to give you two meals for free right off the bat. Think about this. pan seared steaks delivered to your house. You're tired. You don't know what the hell you want to do. Nine out of ten, you go eat fast food or whatever. It's the same amount of money. You cook it. You control your calories. You get healthy. Do me a favor. Blueapron.com slash Joey and get two meals for free on Uncle Joey. Again, nailedatlife.com. You got a vapor. You like smoking wax. You want to see the motherfucking devil? Go to nailedatlife.com right now and look at the great selection of vapor pens they got. Plus, they do those gummies and monos, but unless you live in California, you're getting dick. Don't even ask, dummy. All right, so do yourself a favor. Go to nailedlife.com. First order, you get on the vapor pen 20% off. So it's 50, you get it for 40, delivered to your house. Everything we do here, I get it delivered to your house. That's the beauty of Blue Apron. It gets delivered to your house. The vapor pen, delivered to your house. On it, delivered to your house. Use code Joey Diaz to get the vapor pen. Use code word Joey Diaz to use the vape pen. Also, a lot of people complain about the bottles. And when I put the nasal spray in my nose, do me a favor. Go listen to somebody else. I'm, I'm not fucking around with you people. I come up here on a Sunday night away from my family. Oh, well, can you please use a different form of container? You're making too much garbage. How about when they come in your mouth? What do you do with that? <laughs> please. You, some of you motherfuckers <laughs> listen to the wrong. And, and, and I'm over it. Like we have, a, we have a fucking family here. If a little water bottle insults you, maybe you're hanging out with the wrong people. Maybe go to Starbucks and get your little hat with the umbrella. Whatever the fuck you do, all right? How you feeling, Lisa? I see. I'm feeling pretty great. Society yeah. makes a big I deal stop smiling. about nothing, weird. Lee. Lee, this is what I've been trying to talk to you for 20 years. When I was a kid, yeah. they tried to scare the shit out of me. I live in fear, Lee. Oh, I God. live in fear. I was scared to go into a fucking jujitsu gym. I almost ran away. I live in fear. Don't be scared of nothing in your life. Give it a fucking shot. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? What? You're not going to die. You think, I'm, you think my buddy would give us something that's going to make us die? He's going to make us something that's going to give you a little smile on your face. Listen, this ain't the ass that I used to get in 80 fucking one or 78 or whatever where you're high for 12 hours. I, we, we'd already be off our rockers. We'd be hearing noises and <laughs> shit. Thank God that's not happening. And we put... Uh, 10 milligrams of tea. 200 milligrams. There's not 200. You know I never give you 200. You do. Lying. You eat more than 200 I've on a regular basis. I've been for fucking years. Cut it out, cocksuckers. <laughs> we got to, we're back tomorrow night, 8 o'clock with my main man, Mickey Slicky Betancourt. And then we're back Wednesday afternoon with the Church of What's Happening Now. Again, thank you, you people who came out to Vegas to support the special. And thanks to all the motherfuckers who came out this weekend. Uh, this is becoming something great, man. I love you guys. You guys are making me a fucking better person. So thank you 
for helping me, man, all right? Like I said, you got people in your life that matter, go give them a fucking tackle. I love those guys. I really did. I had a great fucking time with you. You had a great time the last like few times you went. Yeah, so thank you very much. See you motherfuckers tomorrow night. Monday morning you'll be listening to this. Wake up, grab your cock. Ain't nothing for free, cock suckers. Can I have the fucking... Come on, Lee. Put the fucking music on again. You're slowing me down. You're slowing me down.